Bruce Wayne faces hard facts, falls in love, and gets committed to Arkham Asylum. This is my review for Batman the Telltale series for Android. A. V. N. It's headphones nail! What's up guys, Headphones Neil here, back with another Android game review, and in this case it's going to be the 2016 game Batman The Telltale Series. So this is a story-driven uh, game where you take on the role of Bruce Wayne and Batman and have to navigate not only politics, but um, the role of Batman and Bruce's personal life. So there's a few different stories going on that come to a conclusion by the end of the fifth chapter. So. Uh, starting the game, essentially you meet up with Catwoman, so you start off that relationship right off the bat. Um, right after that, you meet up with your friend um, Harvey Dent and his political campaign to become mayor, which leads into an intriguing storyline with Bruce's tenuous relationship with the current mayor who has dirt on him in the form of his father Thomas Wayne being a founding member of the city in the, uh, and the criminal underworld. So the reason Bruce has all the money he did, does is because um, ta his father had gotten in league with the mayor and Carmine Falcone. And so basically it was all dirty money. So <clears throat> Bruce has to deal with the fallout of that. Um, the tenuous relationship as being the biggest financial donor for Harvey Dent and Dent wanting to distance himself from Bruce because of all the money he took and looking corrupt so um, everything is a lot of things are on the fence there um, <clears throat> from there you have to deal with um, a new criminal element in the form of or two, a dual criminal elements but working together in the form of Oswald Cobblepot who's trying to take over um, Wayne Enterprises because they the board of Wayne Enterprises feels that um, because of Bruce's allegations against Bruce, he's become very toxic, so they want him to step down um, so they can figure things out and decide how to move the company forward. Um, Oswald is also taking on, taking on the role of the Penguin in league with a villain named Lady Arkham who's trying to take over the city by um, essentially drugging everybody. Um, think I'll, to me, it felt along, kind of along the lines of Scarecrow from Batman Begins where he has a drug to um, pull out the people's worst nightmares. In the case of Batman the Telltale series, it was a drug that knocks you out, I guess, and makes you do whatever the other person tells you. I wasn't quite sure on that, but um, it was an interesting story in so far as how Lady Arkham was trying to take over the city as a super villain or as the super villain element. So throughout the course of this uh, game, you do have to figure out how to, or how she's manufacturing the drugs, what's going on, who she is, um, how that's falling into place. Um, it all comes to a head in so far as Harvey Dent becomes a victim of um, one of the explosions and becomes Two-Face. Uh, he eventually, at, at one point in the game, catches Bruce. Um, sleeping over at Selena's house as Cat Selena Kyle as Catwoman, because in the very beginning of the game, uh, Selena had scratched or Catwoman had scratched Batman's face, and they figured it out. And or, or um, um, Batman had done something to Selena's eyes. Well, I think gave her a black eye or something of the sorts there. So Selena turns out to be Harvey's girlfriend. They meet each other, figure out who they are and their, their secret identities. During one of the blasts by Lady Arkham, Two Face becomes his Two Face. Um, but in an earlier explosion, Selena ends up saving Bruce. Sleepover, they end up having sex. It makes it complicated. While the rest of Selena's apartment is when Harvey comes over because um, by this time he's lost half his face and sees Bruce staying there. They um, ultimately. Um, kind of reconcile or they fight they kind of reconcile things but it's still tenuous 
So overall, it's a very complex storyline. Um, by the end of it, Bruce tells the public that he is, his money is dirty. And while they originally wanted to open the Thomas and Wayne Memorial Hospital, they realized that they that he, he admits that his father made mistakes in the past in Arkham Asylum by killing and drugging various prominent members of the city. So um, to right that wrong, he's going to overhaul the Arkham Asylum program to rectify the mistakes and give back to the community. So um, because he wants, he knows it's not perfect. It's the least he can do, but that's the best way to um, fix, start um, repairing the lost trust between um, him, so his family name and the city, and also kind of make things right because he understands the wrongs that um, himself, Falcone, and Mayor Hill had done. So overall, the game was very interesting, intriguing. Um, I had originally thought, or not, had, or I had originally not played the game, uh, mostly because the controls felt really sluggish. I didn't. Um, it felt early on when you first jump into the game and having no um, lead into how to play the game, you realize that it or feels a lot harder than it needs to be. So um, it kind of turned me off to it. But having played the Enemy Within, which felt like the easier game to jump into as far as the controls go and getting used to the controls uh, was the better game so it made this game a little bit easier but when you jump into the game with um, having to deal play as Batman perform rapid actions to touch and not really be sure of what to do it makes things harder so if they had started with maybe with the um, opening uh, fundraising event with to face to deal with the controls and then go into the uh, robbery scene that would have made things easier to jump into the game and while the action scenes were intricate well choreographed and even difficult at times starting the game off with it would have been better um, if there was more control options rather than jumping right into it so this time around it was a little bit better but um, still, that's one of my four warnings that I would give when you get into the game is to make sure you have a higher end or a device that's um, powerful enough to run the game because even on a OnePlus 9 Pro, it does still feel pretty sluggish. So um, something to note there. Um, other than that, as far as graphics go, graphics are very nice so if you, the better the screen and better the refresh rate the better it's going to look it does have the look of a graphic novel so that's the one thing i will um applaud the game for so even from 2016 and 2017 for batman the telltale series and batman the enemy within is that they're visually appealing the voice acting is decent it's not really corny or cheesy so that makes it easy to get through um it is generally slow paced so it does get dull at times with random action sequences in the middle, but um, barring that, everything else is very well done. So, um, as far as I know, the and to get into the controls, the games have not been updated for some time. So, I think Telltale has shut down or they were bought out by another studio. So, that's kind of one of the reasons we don't see any updates. But the one thing I would like out of the games, if I were to update it, would be to have better controls or better visual indicators that the controls are working so the first game does have the arrows and action buttons uh, have a, a little bit more of a visual cue than the sequel but it's still iffy as far as if you touched it or not I mean it, sometimes I think that I did not touch the buttons and it, I did sometimes I think I did touch the buttons and I didn't so um, that might also mean that the game was kind of buggy because I did in reading online there were a lot of comments of how the game was buggy a lot of people didn't like the controls and things like that which the second game generally felt better as far as the controls went but both games were generally just felt sluggish so I didn't really prefer one over the other and then with the uneven action sequences it was okay um, the uh, text conversations to progress the interactions with the 
various characters is probably the best part of the game, so um, something that stands out there. So overall, if I was to grade the game, I'd probably give it about a B, just because the story was good, graphics were good, but the controls were sluggish. So for me, I would... I mean, they, they could have reduced the quality of the graphics a little bit or um, had a, maybe easier to skip cutscenes or something like that in favor of better controls or more sensitive controls or something like that. But that would have the controls for me kind of took me out of the game from giving it a solid A, which would have made it, which would have given me a uh, made it a perfect game for me. Um, the only other thing that I kind of didn't like, and that's more of a me problem, is that. Uh, loading the game each time, you have to sit through the intro sequence um, every single time you load the game. You cannot skip through, which was kind of a bummer because if you're playing, well, then you're playing that uh, the game, um, you know, all five chapters all at once, or um, well, I guess if you're playing the all five chapters all at once, you're not quitting the game and coming back, so it wouldn't matter. But if you're going into the game to play it, one, the first chapter, and then coming back to the second, third, fourth, and fifth. Um, individually, then you have to sit through that cutscene at least five times, which was a, is a bummer because if you just want to jump in and play the game, you can't, and that's the issue with both of them. And even when you die um, and you have to restart the sequence, you can't skip through the cutscenes, which makes it a bummer because if you want to, just, if you die and you play, you want to get to, straight to the menu options, not necessarily as a way of cheating or rushing, but just as a way to skip the cutscenes because you've already seen it, then that makes it a bummer and makes the game, um, gameplay that much longer. So um, that's, like I said, that's just a me thing. I just don't like sitting through cutscenes and load screens if I don't have to. And even in, at the very least, I don't like to sit through intro screens if I don't have to. So. Um, just something to note there when you're playing the game is that you have to sit through the cutscene or the load screen every single time. So that's all there is for this particular review. So in the show notes, I'll have a link to the uh, gameplay playlist. So all um, chapters are up for viewing on the YouTube YouTube channel. Um, and I'm not. And for patrons, there isn't a bonus review this for this particular one, but. Um, I did do an initial hot take for episode one that's already up on the Patreon feed, so look out for that. So that's all there is for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or anything like that, you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. The website is PatelN01.com for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. And as I mentioned, if you want to help support the show and get access to extra content, upcoming episodes, and reviews, and things like that, you can find me on Patreon at Patreon.com slash PatelN01. But thanks for tuning in to this particular review, and until next time.